What's up nerfers and welcome back to my channel where I test blasters like this one outdoors in real world conditions to bring you the results that I want to know. That's the intro but today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to show you how I like to zero my sights for nerf. Let's get started. So you've got a brand new blaster, whether that's a Springer, Flywheeler, whatever. And hopefully if you're watching this video, you've also got some form of an optic, preferably a non-magnified one times red dot because anything actually zoomed in is always a bit of a hindrance for fast paced gameplay that you see in Nerf. Now, the first thing to accept is that depending on your blaster, no matter how perfectly you zero it, there will always be some amount of dispersion to your shots. For a Springer, shooting from 30 meters away, this can be as small as a 25 centimeter spread with good rifling. For a flywheel blaster, expect around a meter for your spread. Keep all this in mind as I move on to zeroing. On any optic, there's two axes you can move the reticle along. There's up, down, and there's left, right. I always find it easiest to begin with dialing in the left and right. For a target to aim at, you could just use a vertical pole like I'm using here, place your reticle on the pole and take a shot, noting whether the dart went left of the pole or right of the pole. If your blaster has a large dispersion, you want to make a bunch of shots and average the results. But for the sake of this video, imagine all three of mine went right of the pole. What I want to do in my case then is make the darts go more to the left. So I need to find the left and right adjustment on my sights. It could be a dial, a turret, or even a small grub screw on the tiny pistol size sights. And because I want to move my shots more to the left, what I need to do is find the direction that says left and turn it that way. Think of it as moving where the shots land, not moving the crosshair. After adjusting, take some more shots and repeat the process until you get the shot dispersion centered over the pole. Next is what I'd say is probably the harder concept to wrap your head around, the up and down zeroing. First, you need to decide what distance you want to zero your sight for. A low 130 FPS blaster you might zero for close ranges, 15 to 20 meters or so, while a 300 FPS one I'd always zero for at least 30 meters. Whichever distance you do decide on, you can always hit people further away than that by simply aiming higher. This blaster can reach to a maximum range of around 70 meters if I aim high enough. With the 300 FPS blaster I have here, I've decided on 30 meters since that's around the average distance my opponents will be standing at. And by zeroing for this distance, I can just aim my sight straight on them. However, when this blaster shoots at a target 30 meters away, the dart takes exactly half a second to go from barrel to target. That means gravity has also been acting on the dart for the same amount of time, resulting in a drop of 75 centimeters. If I was to shoot this blaster level with the horizon, or flat as the nerfers used to call it, the darts wouldn't even reach the target before they hit the dirt. So instead, you always need to shoot with a slight upwards angle. Now, for a pro tip here, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have to move your shot grouping up as far as the sight will actually allow it to go. So just bottom out the dial on your sight all the way in the up position. That's what I'd try first anyway, and you can always reduce it back down if it's too much. In my experience though, often you'll find the exact opposite. You'll bottom out that dial, but your shots are still gonna go a little lower than your reticle on the target. Don't worry though, there is a solution to that. Carried over from the world of paintball, there's such a thing as angled Picatinny rails. There's metal ones like this one from Worker, and even 3D printed ones designed by other nerfers. What these will do is tilt the front of your sight down, raising your shots up even further than the sight allows. Personally, with a 300 FPS blaster sighted for 30 meters, I don't find one of these necessary, but if you're looking to zero for longer ranges than what your sight and blaster combo allow, you will definitely want to get one of these. For the vertical spread, you'll want something small you can aim at, for example, the red circle bullseye in the middle of this target. Similar to the left and right test, take say three shots and then average them, adjusting the up and down of your sights until the dispersion is nice and centered. 
If you're using an accurate springer with rifling, your shots should now go pretty much bang on where you're aiming. Further shots may take some guesswork when you're aiming higher though. And for blasters with larger dispersion, such as flywheel blasters, you'll still see benefits from having that wide spread of yours centered over your opponent. You will definitely have a higher chance of hitting someone than if that spread was centered off to the left or right. Congratulations, you've now zeroed a sight for nerf. Just remember that if you want to hit people further away than that, just aim a little bit higher and up close, it doesn't really make a huge difference. Unless you zeroed for such a far away distance that you needed an angled Picatinny rail, that could result in some hilarious headshots if you aim for the body up close. I hope that covers everything you wanted to know, but if you have any further questions, please post them down below. That's all I have for you today. Consider giving this video a thumbs up for the algorithm, and here's two other ones that you might enjoy. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.